Jonathan, can I put to you, can I take this forwards a step and just put to you that, from what Nick has said, that most citizens don't want to come home from a long day at work and think, gosh, if we leave the European Union, do I want mutual recognition of financial services? Do I want Norway Plus? Or do I want to actually stay in the single market on that particular issue? That's what democracy is about. It's about delegating that power, not to narcissistic politicians, but in the hope that you're delegating it to people whose full-time job will be to weigh up the evidence and come to an answer which you can live with, right? So aren't you telling us all as citizens, oh, no, no, you've got to go home and do homework every night. You've got no, to decide. No, on the contrary. In fact, I was going to raise that issue to answer your question about weight in voting. <clears throat> if, if you go through the book, uh, uh, our starting point is just the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's a myth to think that the public is going to be informed on especially complex issues going forward. Uh, and that's even worse now to go to the other question up there because of alternative facts, uh, alternative facts, fake news, and everything else. We once thought the internet was going to create the most informed public for self-government, and we have just the opposite. Yeah. So the assumption is never that everyone's going to, people are busy with work and jobs and uh, family, they're not going to focus on the issues. But poll after poll and actual reality shows that uh, uh, the participatory power of social media gives people the idea they can weigh in on all issues. They can participate on all issues, whether they know or not. That's part of the problem. So our starting point is the political corollary of participatory power of social media is this direct democracy stuff. Now, we did not start our thinking propo proposing direct democracy. We started our thinking because California is already a direct democracy. We saw what the problems were precisely when people are asked to vote on issues that they don't know about. So uh, there was a poll in California um, uh, so, uh, not, not too long ago where I forget the exact figures, but they're roughly the same dimensions. People are asked, would you, and I saw a similar poll today about, about Brexit, about Parliament. Would you, you want the Parliament or you want the legislature and governor to decide the issue or you want the people to decide the issue on taxes? Okay, taxes and budget. Mm -hmm. And everyone said by you know 70%, we want the people to decide, not the politicians. Mm -hmm. The next question was, what are the, for California, what's the main source of funding and what's the main source of expenditures? And less than 10% knew what the answer was. Okay. The biggest source of, of revenue is income tax uh, and the biggest spending is K through 12 schools. So the point is, the total mismatch between what people think they want to do and the knowledge. So our effort with these uh, participation with populism is exactly to do that, is to get the deliberative filter in there. Because the public is not going to inform itself. You need mechanisms, but not just representative government, because that's being eroded by the participatory power of social media and peer-driven media. You need institutions that accommodate social networks and people's um, uh, 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 aspiration for having a direct say in things. That's really what the, what the project, representative democracy is not enough. People don't trust the elites. If people are going to express their voice, you need to get information and the liberation in there. And that's really the idea of participation without populism. 